Are you still using the first credit card you ever got? Or do you have like five in your wallet and you don't know which one to go with? Capital One is some of the best credit cards out there, but which one is the best? If you go to a site like NerdWallet, they will give you ratings out of five stars on different credit cards. The only problem is that they leave out a crucial detail. Different cards are better at different spending levels. If you blindly follow NerdWallet, you would foolishly pick the Saver One card. Spoiler alert, it's not the best at most spending levels. I am a huge spreadsheet nerd, so I had to go down the rabbit hole, so now you don't have to. In this video, we're gonna go over my comprehensive spreadsheet comparing seven of Capital One primary credit cards at different spending levels. Let's get into it. All right, so here is the spreadsheet. I'm gonna start out by going over all of the different credit cards. Here's the first two that we're gonna be looking at. The Quicksilver One card has an annual fee, whereas the Quicksilver does not. The main difference here is that you can have a slightly lower credit score to pick up the Quicksilver One. It'll be pretty easy to see because of the annual fee. This card is never gonna beat the Quicksilver, but I did wanna include it just so you can see how it stacks up. So no annual fee on the Quicksilver. You get a sign up bonus of $200 after you hit the spending goal on all purchases you get at least 1.5 points if you spend money on hotels or rental car then you get five points per dollar spent on the hotels and rental car and that's all the same for the quicksilver one now let's move up to the saver and the saver one. So here we can see the saver one. Main difference here is the saver one has no annual fee. You still get a sign up bonus, but it's gonna be lower than the saver. And then you also get dinged on the streaming and dining and entertainment points per dollar that you get. You can see on the saver one, you only get three points per dollar. Whereas with the saver, you get four points per dollar. Now we're gonna keep going up. Venture and Venture One. Similar scenario to the Quicksilver and the Quicksilver One. The Venture One has zero annual fee, but as a result, you get dinged on the points per dollar spent on all purchases. You also get dinged on the sign-up bonus. The sign-up bonus is pretty huge with the Venture, $750 worth of points, whereas on the Venture One, you only get 200. So excluding year one, the Venture One will start out on top because it does not have a, an annual fee. So you can see, with the Venture, it has an annual fee of $95. You do get a $25 value with the lounge access and a $25 per year value on the global entry slash pre-check, but you still end up down $45. In order to make up that difference, you have to spend enough money naturally for your two points per dollar to overtake that 45 difference over the 1.25 points per dollar spent on the Venture One. Scrolling up, and finally, we got the big dog of the Venture cards, the Venture X. It's got a much bigger annual fee, $395, but because it's the big dog, you get an annual travel credit of $300 and anniversary bonus of $100 worth of points. So right there, you're already up $5 over the annual fee just on your annual bonuses. Now, you do have to travel once per year to make this annual travel credit worth it. So if you're not a traveler, this card's not gonna be for you. You also get lounge access and airports, $25 value, and then you also get the global entry pre-check value, which is $25 on average per year. You get the free global entry or pre-check once every four years, and you get $100 towards that. So on average, it's $25 per year. And then once again, massive sign-up bonus with the VentureX, $750 on that year one sign-up bonus. Let me back up a bit. You can see we got two columns here when we're looking at each card. You got your annual totals, and then you got your year one totals. Most credit cards are going to have a big sign-up bonus, so you'll be way ahead in year one, but it's not going to be like that going forward. So I like to go ahead and include an annual. This will be like every year after the first year. Just on the bonuses, you're going to be positive 55 bucks on the Venture X, but in year one, you'll be plus $180. It's also better than the other cards in that you get two points per dollar on all purchases. You get five points per dollar spent on flights through Capital One Rewards, and then you get 10 points per dollar on hotels and rentals that are bought through Capital Capital One rewards. So this card is pretty solid right off the bat. One of the big things that is gonna help you to analyze which card is best for you is knowing which of these perks are you actually gonna use. So I put a one in here. If I'm the type of person that likes to use the global entry or pre-check, this is just like a quality of life upgrade. It just gets you through the lines faster at the airport. If this is something that you don't care about spending the money on, you just pop a zero in there and it'll automatically throw a zero into all these rows below for the global entry and pre-check. If you're not gonna take a trip every year that utilizes a flight or a hotel that you book through Capital One, you're gonna pop a zero in that one as well and you can see it automatically zeroes out the lounge access 
access. You're not going to have access to a lounge if you're not going to the airport and you're not going to be able to utilize your annual travel credit if you put a zero in there. Here's another one right here, number of travelers. So if you are going to be with a significant other, you put a two in there and we'll go back to the one trip per year on the flights and hotels. So if I put two, you can see the lounge access is increased from $25 to $50 because you can bring in a guest and you can take food out with you. So you definitely have enough to probably up to four people you could feed. So if you have a family of four, you go in, you come out with a bag of food for your family, you can put a four in there and then now you're up to a hundred dollar value if you're able to take advantage of the lounge access there. For this first analysis, I'm going to assume that you do want to use the global entry. We're going to have one on the number of travelers. So we're just going to assume just a single person. And now we can scroll over to see the spending category. This spreadsheet is showing average spending. So I pulled these numbers off the internet. Average credit card spending for an individual is $19,200 per year. The common allocation for groceries will be $3,600 per year, streaming $660 and so on. So here's the average spending of $19,200. This column here will correspond to this row. This row will compare all of the points that you get for each card at this spending level. Also, it assumes the user profile that I mentioned earlier, this user profile here. So if I change these values, it'll automatically change the spending categories on the right. So we come back over for one traveler taking one trip per year. The Venture X card will get you $522 worth of points. The Venture 366, the Saver 441, the Saver 1 445. So you can see the Venture X is in first place here. And the Saver 1, which I kind of trashed on earlier, is actually in second place. So it's not bad if we look at somebody who spends 23,000. All of these values are increased accordingly. Here's somebody that spends 27,000. These values are increased for each of the categories. Somebody who spends 57,331 on their credit cards you can see it corresponds to this row. So in this case, the winner will actually actually be the saver. The saver gets $1,500 worth of points, whereas the Venture X only gets 1,448. The reason the saver wins when you get to the higher spending levels is because it actually has better points per dollar spent. So whenever you're not spending very much, it's these annual bonus categories come out on top, but eventually as you spend more and more, the saver overtakes it and eventually the saver one probably would as well. If you want to see a graph Graphical view of this, we can keep scrolling down. We can see here at the beginning, the Venture X is on top straight away. This axis down here is your spending. And as we spend more and more, it slowly gets overtaken by that green card, which is represented by the saver here. At the lower spending levels down here, it's kind of bunched up. So I made this graph down here so that we can kind of zoom in. At the lower spending levels, you can see the Venture X is on top. Second place is the saver one. The reason it's above the saver is because it starts off without an annual fee. Since there's no annual fee, it's going to take some spending for that green to close the gap. And you can see if we scroll back up, the orange overtakes the green around $23,000 spent. So depending on your spending, there's going to be different cars that are going to be on top. Thanks for staying with me this long. If you are interested in this spreadsheet, I've included it in the description. So at the end of the video, you can snag that for free. Give me a like down below. It helps with the algorithm and I would really appreciate it. I want to showcase that now with a different scenario. We're going to look at somebody who does not travel. So if we change our user profile here to somebody that does not take advantage of the global entry, does not take one trip per year, and we'll just say number of travelers zero because you're not traveling, then we can scroll back over and see how this was affected. We still have the same spending, but they've got zeros in the flight, rental car, and hotel category. So Venture X, you are losing money. So if you are somebody who spends $10,000 per year on your credit card. You're not taking advantage of the travel credit. You're not taking advantage of the annual points bonus. Then you are losing money big time. So you got to start spending. You actually still lose money because of the annual fee if you spend $14,000. Let's start with the average category. So at average spending, the winner is the saver one. So it actually does come out on top in one category here. That's if you are spending average, you're not traveling at all. That saver one, believe it or not, it actually 
probably is for you. Now, if we go down to the very bottom category here at the highest spending level, spending $57,000 per year, the saver comes out on top. And once again, that's because the points that you get per dollar are much higher with the saver. The Capital One credit cards tend to get the most value if you at least travel a little bit. If there's another credit card company that you're interested in, let me know in the comments and I can make a video using this same comparison. The next user profile I want to look at is somebody who travels maybe a little bit more. So for a big traveler, we're going to say they do use the global entry pre-check. They are going to do three trips per year and they are traveling with a family of three. They're not doing just one trip per year. They're doing three trips per year. So this is accounting for three people. You can see the lounge access is now a big benefit because every time you go into the lounge, it's about a $25 value per person. So $25 times the three people, that's 75 bucks. And then if you're doing that three times a year, 75 bucks times three, that's $225 value in just free food and drinks. You're also getting to utilize the annual travel credit, you're utilizing your anniversary bonus, of course, and you are getting to utilize your global entry and pre-check. The other card that also gets access to the lounge is the venture card. So if we scroll back over and see how this affects our points, we can see that at average spending levels, the Venture X card has pulled way ahead of the pack. The saver left in the dust, even beat by the Venture card. And this difference is only going to get bigger as we spend more and more money. So if we look at this last category, the Venture X is getting a staggering $2,329 value. The Venture is getting $1,500. And the Saver is now jumped up into second place with $1,720, with the Saver 1 actually in third place right behind the Venture card. So in this case, you're getting big benefit with the yearly annual bonuses. And then these Saver cards are catching up with their superior points. But again, it's going to take a lot of spending to finally catch up to the Venture X card. That makes a big difference. Another big benefit to the Venture X card in the track travel category. If we go back over here to VentureX, you can see for hotel and rental, you're getting 10 points per dollar so that the more you spend on travel, hotel and car rentals, the more points you're going to get from that venture card. The final category is going to be people who want to churn their credit card. Churning is where you get one credit card, you get your sign up bonus, and then you deactivate it or downgrade it into a free version of that same card. I recommend downgrading to a free version of that credit card company. Usually it's better for your credit score. That being said, most of the credit cards with the really big sign up bonuses do have some restrictions. They won't let you just continually churn the same credit card. Most of them will have a restriction saying if you've received this sign up bonus, in the last two years, you will not be eligible for it. We're going to pop a one in this first year only. So this is for somebody who's churning. In the previous analysis, when we were looking at the amount of points you get as a function of spending, we were not considering the year one sign up bonus because I wanted to give you an idea of what you could expect if you hold the credit card long term from year two to year 10. Now with this analysis, we are going to solely look at year one because we're looking through the lens of I want to churn this credit card, which one is going to give me the most value on that sign up bonus in year one so I can then move on to the next card as soon as possible. So average spending category $19,200 for somebody who is going to utilize the global entry and the pre check, they are going to do one trip per year, and they are going to have just one traveler. So in this case, if you're doing year one, this is for churning only the venture x and the venture is just destroying these other Capital One cards. These are the clear favorites in terms of value for just taking advantage of that first year sign up bonuses. And that was pretty easy to see from the beginning. These two cards are the only ones that give you the big $750 sign up bonus. The Venture X gives you the $300 travel credit and the anniversary bonus. So that does a really good job of making up for these big annual fees. As you can see, it is crucial to compare different credit cards at the spending rate that most closely matches your own spending. Not only that, the type of spending that you have will also have a huge impact. In this case, going on just one trip a year that includes a flight, hotel, and a rental car puts the Venture X way ahead of the pack. As promised, I've included a link for this spreadsheet tool in the description. If you're interested, I would really appreciate you leaving some comments, give me some feedback. Are there any things you'd like to see added, taken out, anything you'd like to see changed? If you need help to determine your current spending levels, check out my video on the easiest and most passive way to budget and track your spending. Until next time.